Hey, welcome to this video. This is a build series I'm doing on my house. This is the shop, I mean the house, the shop. So this is the framing video. We're gonna go all through the framing. I'm a contractor, I've been contracting for like 30 years, got a lot of experience. Anyway, I'm gonna show you all I know. So this is gonna be the framing video for this house. Stay tuned. Okay, so I'm gonna start, this is my first step in framing. I didn't do a very good job on the foundation. And my grade is terrible, which is pretty common. You're gonna see that a lot. So I've cut these shims. I have eighth inch and three eighths. I'm gonna go along, I'm gonna set the laser and find my highest point, and then I'm gonna just build whatever it takes to get that within an eighth inch for my floor. This is your last chance to get your floor level. Even before I build my walls downstairs, I wanna know where my level is. Because if I just pull the string line on these plates, one of them might be a half inch low, the whole floor is gonna be low. So I'm gonna go around the whole thing with the laser and tack these on. I've laid out my uh, I lay out for my floor joists so I know where everything is. I just got this tedious process of leveling it up, but it's a really important one. I do a lot of houses and a lot of foundations have big problems. They look really flat, but that side of the wall might be a half inch lower than this side of the wall. Always get your laser out. If you don't have one, rent one. All right, I'll steal it. Couldn't figure out a good way to film laser in that. I just walked around with my laser and you can see and you can see some of them are eight, three eighths and I just kind of went along each layout until it's flat. It was that wall was bad but the rest of them was a lot better than I thought. See I've got a couple on that back wall. Just to kind of lighten it out. And the other spot that was bad was right there. I had on uh, probably a quarter inch dip right there. So now I'm going to take a finished brad nailer and go along and nail all those on. And I will have a perfectly lasered floor. Here's a little better view for you. A big dip right there. It's on right here and it drops a lot right there. So you can see, I just shot those on to flatten that out. Those are my layouts for my joists. So that'll straighten it all out. What Joe's doing here is crowning the studs and that's the banana shape. Here's a really exaggerated shape. But you've got to get those all in the same direction so you don't have waves in your wall. And we stand the stud up and rub it against a string that we've got from plate to plate. It leaves a little mark and you know the exact height to cut. Let's get this house started. Boom. Notice how Joe holds his hand way back away from that stud. Every guy I've ever trained learns that lesson the hard way. They shoot themselves by holding it too close. So here's what three guys can get done in a day if you know what you're doing. We just put that string across the top, we'll frame that wall, we'll pull that string down, and we'll put it right over the top of the next wall. We'll chalk that all out, cut them all, put them up. And I'm framing this in August because I'm trying to get a couple of concrete pours up against the floor. I just don't want to have to deal with it in the freezing conditions of winter. After this, I built the shop through the winter. Okay, when you uh, stand your basement bearing walls, a lot of times these walls might be leaning in or out. And so, Instead of trying to figure it out every time, you just cut it a little short. And now we need to get this wall racked level, especially because we have a two-piece wall. We're going to put that top plate all the way through. Mark in, doesn't matter what, and at eight inches, see that laser dot. And then up there, also got an eight-inch mark. So we'll, we'll rack this wall until we get to that green dot. Perfect. On both of these walls. But I would show you how the plan works. Um, uh, just a 16 inch layout, they're all numbered, just like trusses. You'll notice right here I've got kind of an extra one laying right there. I got a toilet right here and you can't cut floor trusses like you can floor joists so I've got to have an extra so that I can figure out where my toilet is and spread that apart and make sure that I hit on without having to cut. A truss. Anyway, that's 
That's the information we're working off of. I measured the foundation and I gave them all of these numbers and that's how I got the floor. I didn't dare order without having measured off my foundation. It just, when these are wrong, it's bad. It's really bad. You have to cut all this gusset crap out. It's a nightmare. You have to put big sheets. If you're doing floor trusses, you gotta be on the 16th. All right, let's see if we can get it done. I wanted to walk you through the toilet problem I was talking about. My plans, put a little, uh, a little mark where a toilet is. Transfers it through all my program. So I went back to my toilet here. Six foot five and a half to inside to inside. So I went six foot nine. That gets me to the outside of the wall. Got these measurements. So the hook from that wall I'll come to here. Six nine. And you're, you want your center of your toilet flange 12 inches off your wall. But if you screw that up and you're 11 and 3 quarters, oh my gosh, it sucks. So I put them at about 12 and a half or 13 just to make sure I have plenty of room. And that was my original floor joist layout. A little too close, so I just moved it over one inch. The floor joists are three and a half wide. That's child's killing it. And that'll give me the clearance. So pretty lucky on this one. Sometimes they're dead center and you got to change everything. But pay attention to your plumbing layout as you're doing your floor. You got to be thinking down the road on all, all this stuff. A lot more efficient. We're just getting ready to start floor joists, but we've got to mount these steel plates. These carry all the way to the second floor. All the way up, big steel beam. Got one there and one here. And another one over there point is you want to get all of your bolt work anything you're gonna do that's hard to reach before you put your trusses on so this will be a nightmare after those trusses are on so I'll do that then I'll show you some stuff we do before we sheet because it's a lot easier to do before you sheet and floor joists At the time that I built this house floor joists floor trusses were actually cheaper than floor joists which is rare they're a lot stiffer you can span a lot farther they, you run all of your mechanical and electrical through those with just, just ease. It's so nice. They're, they're a little detailed. You've got to be right on the money. But they make a lot nicer, flatter floor. They go in quick. and see how fast we threw them all together. Okay, if you look at your truss, try if you're doing floor trusses. Hard to point out. Right here, it shows a brace. It's going to be a two by six. We're putting those in now. But you've got to be careful. It's got that level laying on there because the one you're standing on is probably down a quarter of an inch. And if you tack that brace on, you'll get a lumpy floor. So but keep everything in plane and watch that level. But we are almost ready to start cheating. One thing I do too, I take a hand planer, electric hand planer, and I plane that because sometimes they might be a quarter of an inch high, and that will hump your floor up, just cause issues. So I did that all down those. Still gotta do that one, we've done that one. A little bit more and we'll be ready to sheet. You can see how high that is? I'm gonna take that off right now. this level it out but you get the idea otherwise you're gonna get a humpy floor first row of sheets I chalk a line at 48 and a half from the outside that make sure that this tongue is on the inside and also lay out rough 14 and a half that makes a 16 inch center so everyone has to be held back an inch and a half just on these three and a half inches so that your sheet will center up 16 center. 
So here's the underside of the porch cap. I took three quarter inch plywood. I can't point with my light. Three quarter inch plywood up there on the side and I screwed it into the uh, ribs on the foam. Kind of as a, because it's, it sticks up like six inches above the, the top anyway. Put some screws in there, but they, they have no structural support at all. It was just to give me something to build that upper deck on. And then you have to put these two by fours all over the place to carry the weight of that porch cap. And then we'll tear them out. Give it about a week and then we'll tear them out. And because it's 12 foot, we put a lot of kickers in here because they might flex on us and push out. But then I can come in and I tear, I'm gonna tear all of that out so I can spray foam that concrete on the lid because concrete is porous and water will get through it. So I'm gonna spray foam that up there and then I'll put another uh, fault ceiling in about a foot down. And that's it for the porch cap. Just remember those sheets have no structure to them. They're just tacked on the wall. The two by fours carry the weight of the cap. They're actually holding up those sheets. That's it. Okay, on the top side of this porch cap, I ran an extra block here. You can see it's a little higher. It was up there. I knew I was going to cut it down. But this is uh, six inches below the floor. You saw underneath how it was all built. Now I'm going to put a 2x6 right here. And then we'll put like a 2x12. That'll give me a one inch overhang on my porch cap. I need one inch of slope going that way. I just torched these bars because I like it nice and clean square bends. And wrap that all around. Build up this porch cap, get ready to pour. Here's a good example of how these ribs work on the ICF. Watch this suck it in. See that? It's pulling a little hard because I cut it off. It's open here, but you get you can attach anything to these all the way down. Put a lot of screws in there. That's how you do it. Siding everything. You can see you're going to attach to every one of those. Every six inches. Better than a stud wall in my opinion. Alright, here's my finished product. Those are uh, the 12 foot verticals that are all the way in the wall. It's important to keep those connected. And you'll see in here back onto the concrete. I want that cap to go down, land on that concrete. Good bearing weight. The only place I couldn't get it was down in here. But that's enough strength to support the cap. Three sides will do it. Um, I gotta put chamfer strip on there and then I put like a house wrap, a roll of house wrap on there because when you strip this, the moisture sucks into that wood and then sometimes it pops the face of your uh, concrete off I'll explain that while I'm pouring but if you can stop the water from sucking into that face board it makes your stripping and rubbing a whole lot easier okay to start we're gonna go over the terminology on all this stuff I've got a wall drawn out here this is our common stud right here this is gonna be 104 and 5 8 why 104 and 5 8 because when you add the three plates together, you get nine foot, one inch, and one eighth. And that's supposed to account for a half inch of flooring, a half inch of drywall, and end up with a nine foot ceiling. An eight foot wall is 92 and five eighths, gives you eight foot, one and one eighth. We have a door, starts with a header. It's gonna pick up the load from what's ever above and transfer it to the trimmer. Trimmer transfers the load down to the floor. Trimmer both sides. On a door, on a window, same thing. Trimmer, trimmer. The one, the stud next to the trimmer that goes all the way up is called the king stud. And that goes all the way through. The little short 2x4s you cut on the top, triple. I'm not very good at this. Triple. All those. Header. 
cripples, trimmers, king stud, seal plate. Eesh. Seal plate is what goes on the bottom of your window. And these are also cripples. Cripples, seal plate, trimmer, king stud, header. Down here we've got bottom plate. The, the second, the top plate there can be called a top plate or a frame plate. I like to call it a frame plate. And then the final top plate is called the crown plate. With all that stuff, as I'm moving along, you'll understand. Bottom plate, frame plate, crown plate, headers, trimmers, cripples, seal plate. And that's what's in a wall. The other thing to know, that's where you're starting. This first measurement, the center of that stud needs to be 16 inches. But that stud's an inch and a half wide, and you want that sheet to break in the center of the stud, so therefore you need to go over three quarter. So your, all of these layouts are 16 inch, but this first one, 15 and a quarter. Holy, 15 and one quarter. Or if you hook your tape from here and pull the whole wall, you just hold back three quarters of an inch from the 16 inch. That way when you, if you come over four feet, your sheet is four feet, and you've held back three quarter, your sheet is gonna center on the stud. If you're ever hooking from a stud that's laid out, then you're 16 inch. From the corners, 15 and a quarter. 15 and a quarter, 31 and a quarter, on and on. And that's what we're gonna do. Let's do it. Here's my first wall. Got a door right here. X is a stud, I don't put a K, I just put an X for a king stud, trimmer, cripple, 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 trimmer, king stud, gonna be a header right there. And then I don't have it, I didn't, there's a wall right there, you can see. So I put a stud and a stud and then I lay one flat so that I have something to shoot, something to shoot that into. Got two walls that do that. So if you look at the way, when you're hooking on the end, you're gonna end I don't know how that other footage worked out, so I'm gonna do it again. You hook on the end when you're on a corner, you're gonna be 15 and a quarter to your stud layout. That gives you 16 inch to the center of the stud. 31 and a quarter, 47 and a quarter, 63 and a quarter. Now if I were to hook, say you got a 50 foot wall, you ran out of tape and you got to start again. If you're going to hook on that, now you're at 16. Don't hold back three quarter unless you're hooked on a corner. Okay. Now I'm going to get the studs, headers. I'm going to build this wall. When I build a wall, first thing everyone wants to do is throw all their studs out there and maybe nail the studs. It just gets in your way. I got a door and two wall butts. So I frame all that up first. One of the reasons is you put this stud right here and then you try to build this header. You can't get your nail gun in there to nail this header. So I like to get all that done. I'll shoot those to the bottom plate, not the top plate. Then I'll throw all my studs in, shoot those to the bottom plate. Then I'll come up to my frame plate, tack all that together, and then fill in my cripples. As you can see here, you nail that header together first, and nail a two by six on the bottom to make it the width of the wall. Shoot my trimmers on, shoot the king studs to the header, build my wall butts, get them all in place. And then I'll come back, start shooting them to the bottom, get everything lined out. And I'll throw all my studs down. Shoot all those to the bottom. Roll up to the top plate. I'll tack that side, I'll shoot down a few studs, but I don't shoot it over the door because if you don't, you have to bang your cripples in with a hammer. This way you can just drop them in and then you shoot that top plate tight. If you're working alone, you gotta have a fork. I just happen to have an extra one that I can use on this job. But we stand all of our balls even if we do a fork list. We just need to come up and so not get the fork over there. So, grab it, just lift it up, kind of teeter it on its edge. 
once I get it all where I want to be, I can put it back on the wall plate. Stand it up, it's so much easier than lifting it. It's not possible with it. Then I'll come back and just shoot it all down onto the plate. It's got a, got a plate on the floor because I have an inch and a half of concrete that goes on there for my radiant floor. So I've got to lift the walls up an inch and a half. So I'm shooting onto the plate that I've already nailed down. So I'm getting ready to frame this garage and I lost the footage of framing it. But again, you take your grinder and you flatten that all out. So many imperfections that will screw it up and this shows up in your fascia, it will wrinkle your aluminum socket. So I'm getting ready to do that. And then that's the end of this part of the video. The next video is gonna be the structural steel which I have to put in to continue framing. And we will just keep working, keep working away.